All right. Uh, basically, my name is uh, Rostislav. I, uh, I'm an FMPEG developer. I, I work at Open Broadcast Systems Limited. And uh, the thing I'm talking about today is uh, the Vistu uh, encoder in FMPEG. And uh, as well as, uh, as overall on the state of wavelets and uh, how they're used nowadays and, uh, and uh, all the other things that relate to the uh, VC2 codec. Now, the, for those of you who do not know, VC2 is basically a broadcast uh, only specific version of, of uh, the Dirac uh, codec. Uh, for, you, for those of you who don't know Dirac, Dirac was made, uh, was started back in 2005 by the BBC. And their aim was to produce something which was a, um, a patent-free, or um, so they said, uh, codec which uses wavelets. And, uh, and they, they wanted to make it as efficient as possible. Uh, that unfortunately didn't turn out. However, VC2 found its niche in, uh, in the broadcasting industry because it offers uh, a few advantages which, uh, which are of interest to broadcasters. So first of all, let's start with... Uh, with with uh, Dirac. Now, in a nutshell, Dirac, uh, Dirac is kind of a state of an art um, wavelet codec. Uh, it, it, by the end of its life, it had some very advanced features and um, as well as some features which, which were demonstrated later on to not provide much benefit. So for starters, it provided a total of, um, a total of seven uh, wavelets. Um, Way that um, transforms. Um, most of you know the Har wavelet. Uh, the nine seven wavelet is uh, is possibly the most often used wavelet because it was also used in um, in JPEG two thousand as well as the Legal five three wavelet, which was also used in JPEG two thousand. Uh, the the Slory's Dubic uh, thirteen seven wavelet is kind of an upgrade of the uh, nine seven wavelet. Uh, it adds a bit more blur. And um, it uses scalar quantization, um, OBMC to, to do motion compensation. Uh, it has DC prediction in the core profile and in the low delay profile. I'll talk about them later on. Uh, it uses Golem coding, uh, and it has arithmetic coding as well. Um, arithmetic coding can be turned on and off um, at, uh, at the encoder site um, whenever it wants, actually. It also supports B frames, surprisingly. And um, yeah, next, VC2 in a nutshell. Now, VC2 was standardized by the um, SMPT in uh, 2011, I think, or maybe it was 2012. And what it was is basically a standardization of Dirac Pro. Now, Dirac Pro was started in parallel with Dirac, and it, and it was basically a, um, a intro-only version of Dirac. So no OBMC, no nothing. Just, just straight up transform, um, transform your plane, quantize it, send it over, and that's it. Um, uh, Dirac Pro and uh, VC2 have uh, a few profiles. They have the core profile, the low delay profile, and the new profile introduced with VC2, which is called the high quality profile. And uh, it's, I'll talk about that later as well. And uh, it also advertised support for lossless generation, uh, generational encoding. So if you, if you, for instance, have an encoder and you feed in the output of one encoder into a decoder, and then from the decoder you feed that into another encoder, if if you if you re-encode the image with the same quantizational indices, then uh, then you should um, end up with a lossless re-encode. So you lose no information if you if you put a thousand or a hundred encoders, it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, uh, there was a mix-up with the spec. So what happened was uh, it's quite limited. All right. So first, I want to give a, big, a bit of a backstory on uh, on the use of wavelets. Now, um, suppose it's it's the late '90s. Uh, this is around the time that uh, JPEG uh, 2000 was being developed, and uh, one of the things that happened in the '90s was uh, the Matrix. Uh, for those of you who do not know, the Matrix was a very influential film. Now. Also, uh, one thing which happened during the 90s was the development of the JPEG 2000 codec. And uh, unfortunately, the developers did not look at the matrix um, uh, for an extended period of time. So they instead chose to work. And what they worked on was to solve the problems with JPEG. Now, JPEG had a few problems, which were mostly due to the fact that it, 
it was a simple codec made in the uh, early 90s. And uh, it basically used 8x8 eight eight, uh, DCTs. And, um, and the most obvious problem with it was the fact that it was blocking. Uh, you don't see much blocks nowadays on JPEG images because simply 8x8 eight eight is way too small if, if your image is 4,000 by 2,000 pixels. So, um, so it's, JPEG has gotten, you know, good enough, although it's very inefficient. Um, it also, JPEG, uh, to, uh, JPEG also had limited support for, um, for subsamplings and uh, overall plain formats, so they wanted to fix that as well. So that's why they dedicated most of the JPEG 2000 spec, if anyone has seen it, to, to actually standardizing uh, the way um, multiple formats, it supports XYZ and so on. Uh, so first of all, I'll talk about um, how wavelets are, um, are um, how wavelets work. Now, the way wavelet transforms work is you take your plane and you apply a low pass filter on um, on the entire image. So you have a, a low pass filter running in uh, in one direction and in the other direction and. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense when you see it like this, but when you see it like this, uh, this is a, um, a chunk of uh, ASCII art from the uh, from the uh, Visio Encore in FMPEG. Not the proper place for it, but nevertheless, it's there. So you can see how uh, a single image is decomposed into into this kind of a tree structure, and each of those uh, each of those chunks uh, contains contains. Um, details of, of, um, of the image. So the theory is that if you decompose the image and you put each separate, um, separate um, uh, detail which completes the image and adds detail to it, you will get the original image back. Now all the, uh, are, all the, um, all the transforms in uh, VC2 are, um, are lossless, so there is no loss associated with that. And uh, basically, you can think of wavelets as just as just down downscaling the image until it gets to to this point. So you're downscaling the image by one, two, three, by uh, by three times, and uh, all the um, all the other chunks here they they are called levels and they contain detail needed to to scale the image back one level. So by this point you have an image which is this big then then this big, and then you have the entire image back. So the theory is that this is, uh, this is going to be more beneficial to encoding images because uh, you don't have to work with blocks anymore. You can just encode the entire image at once and, um, and you wouldn't have any blocking artifacts and uh, it would just be a beautiful thing which just works. Now, unfortunately, that wasn't exactly the, the case uh, because JPEG, the JPEG 2000 proved to be uh, inefficient and it was hard to encode. It was a, it was a, um, a, a very um, large uh, spec. So at the end, we got something which, which was marginally better uh, than JPEG when it was released and now it's, now it's about the same or JPEG might be even a bit better. So, so yeah, this is the uh, five level Dislorius Zubuk. This is the standard level uh, wavelet, and this is Har, and you can see how, uh, uh, how the 97 has, has a bit more detail, but, uh, but Har has a bit less ringing. So at the end, choosing your wavelet is basically a choice between do you want more ringing or do you want more, more uh, pixelated artifacts? So, so when um, so there was a whole high period of, of wavelets when uh, when people didn't know the exact advantages that wavelets offered. So uh, quite a few uh, quite a few codecs were made during the time when um, when when wavelets were believed to be better. So JPEG 2000 was uh, one I talked about. Uh, Snow, which was an FMPEG only a um, uh, codec. It was the video codec. It used OBMC as well. Um, kind of similar to Dirac, Indio 4 and 5, nobody used them. Pegasus, maybe some professional um, system used them. Apple Pixlet codec, well, we know that ProRes won, so whatever. Uh, VSS Wavelet Video, Cineform, which, uh, which is existing, and uh, Kieran, my colleague, wrote a decoder for that, and it's merged in FMPEG. Uh, it's used by cameras, and uh, it's also used by, by, um, by, um, 
by the Cineform proprietary software. And it's basically to allow people um, to edit 4K video on a less powerful computer. At least uh, that's from what I hear. PGF was also uh, an image-only codec. Uh, it used wavelets and uh, PMF, which no one knows a thing. Um, a few feel the niche by themselves. Uh, for instance, JPEG 2000 right now is used for some um, for some point-to-point -point encoding. So it was used, as far as I know, to encode the 2012 Olympics. Uh, it was used as a mez uh, as a mezzanine codec, and uh, it basically um, it's um, it's encoded by big clunky machines with with custom ASICs uh, there because because uh, JPEG 2000 uses arithmetic coding and. Uh, at that bitrate, uh, which you're working with in a, in a, in a iframe on the um, codec, uh, you really need uh, you really need something which is either efficient um, but is encoded quickly, or something less efficient which is uh, encoded a bit more slowly. Which um, uh, Dirac and VC2 solve this problem by uh, by using Golem calls, which are still fast enough, just fast enough, if you're smart enough to to uh, to the code in real time, um, up to 500 or so megabits per second on a software implementation. So first of all, I'll talk about the uh, quantization uh, in Dirac and VC2. Um, that's it. This is richly uh, it. It's a scalar quantization. You multiply the coefficient by four. You divide it by um, by a, a, a number, which you get from a table. Uh, for the dequantization, you you do this uh, a bit complicated thing. But in reality, the Q offset variable uh, should should basically compensate for the rounding issues which happened uh, during division. Um, Basically, the generational uh, loss relied on the fact that uh, that it was a symmetrical um, a, a symmetrical conversation. Unfortunately, what what happened was the 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 offset table uh, was wrong in the spec. Uh, I've uh, I we have spoken to to the Dirac uh, VC2 developers, and they have. Uh, they have seen that there is an error, they have replicated it, and um, they will hopefully fix it in the spec. And hopefully when they fix it, uh, you'll finally be able to re-encode video. But that will also break uh, the backwards compatibility that uh, VC2 tried to keep, so who knows what's going to happen. Uh, I don't believe it was uh, it was tested during reality, but I do remember reading in a spec that uh, that it was indeed possible uh, if you if you pick the um, if you pick the same quantization uh, index uh, which the original image was encoded with. The way you recover that, uh, unfortunately, I'm not uh, aware of how you would do that efficiently. But um, I'll need to take a look at the spec again. Right, so a bit of graphs now. Uh, this is this is the bit cost uh, for encoding a slice uh, versus the quantization index, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, um, around uh, around quantization index 40. It rolls off when you reach the minimum amount of bits uh, you can um, you can quantize the bits to, and there's a bit of uh, there's a bit of um, uh, non-linearity around the uh, the edges, and uh, you um, you can see how quantization in zero and one will cost approximately the same. So if you take a look at, at this thing, which is a bit more zoomed, you can see how the the bit cost for quantization index uh, one, two, and three is basically the same as zero, but you're still losing losing detail because because uh, of the way quantization works. So you might want to avoid using these quantization indices uh, when you when you try to to um, to write your own encoder. Uh, thankfully, thankfully the the whole the whole graph is as you can see very linear. So you can use uh, you can use um, very rough approximations and you would still get approximately um, approximately the same uh, results. Um, uh, we don't actually avoid using quantization indexes uh, one and two right now, but maybe we'll fix that in the future um, when uh, when there's a need to improve the performance of the um, of the encoder. Um, this is a cost graph for the uh, for a few wavelets. As you can see, um, the nine seven wavelet costs costs um, costs. Um, Cost more bits than the, than uh, either a five tree wavelet or a high uh, or a hard wavelet, 
and uh, this is simply due to to the fact that 97 results in larger um, in larger coefficients. Now, the way that coefficients are encoded in VC2 is using uh, using something called Golomb. Um, this is also a graph for you um, X264 aficionados. It's the um, sum of absolute uh, transform differences. Just just something to mess around with. So basically, Golomb coding, uh, the, the flavor of Golomb coding used in, uh, in VC2 is, uh, is called the interleaved EXP Golomb, and um, it can code indefinitely large numbers, so you can code, uh, code infinity, and it would cost basically an infinity amount of bits. Um, the smaller numbers cost the least. This is what the quantization uh, method in um, VC2 also tries to do. It tries to minimize uh, the uh, amplitude of coefficients. And the cost increases by two bits for each power of two which you pass along. So you go from four to, to uh, eight and your, um, your, your cost increases by two bits. So the algorithm to, to do Golomb reading is, is quite simple. You start over with a loop and you check each, um, you check each coefficient in an even, um, in an even position. And if it's one, then that means that your coefficient ends now and you should, you should subtract one from it and uh, read a bit if there's, um, to see the sign and that's it. Otherwise, you just, uh, you just multiply it, uh, by two. And you or uh, the 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 bit in the odd position which you have, and uh, the disadvantage is it's slow. So when your bit rate is around 200, 300 megabits per second, you you would run into performance issues. So a way to fix that is by using for lookup tables, which is uh, what the uh, current decoder in FMPEG does. It uh, it constructs the tables on runtime, so every time the codec is um, is the decoder is initialized, it uh, it runs over, and uh, what it basically do is, what it basically does is it loops over each entry in the lookup table, and uh, it runs a search to discover any Golomb codes in there, and if uh, if there are any, it puts them in a um, in an array, and if there's a uh, if there's a Golomb code in there, but it's not finished yet. It classifies it as either um, as either it should end in a in an even um, in an even position, or it should end in an odd position. So you have two lookup tables for that. You, you need two more lookup tables. One of them is for one more bit left. So that's the sign bit, because you it can happen that your your Golomb code uh, your Golomb code ends. However, you do not have a sign yet. Uh, there's also a fresh start um, um, uh, lookup table, which which is which is run when you first run the uh, uh, when either you first run uh, the um, the um, uh, the Golomb decoder uh, or you um, or you have finished fully a Golomb code in the previous byte. So this works. It's uh, it's very efficient. It's kind of similar to to the way that the unofficial um, official uh, uh, VC2 HQ decoder does it. It also uses for lookup tables. They do a bit more clever things, and they uh, they instead do the Dirac decoding, uh, the, the Golomb decoding in a process which is a bit more complicated. But I didn't want to plagiarize anything, and uh, and. This thing is fast enough. It's like two or three uh, frames uh, uh, per second behind theirs, but it's quick enough. Uh, now a bit, uh, a bit on the on the bitstream. Uh, basically, VC2 uses a variable slice size, so you can specify the slice size per um, uh, per frame. You can go from from 32 by 8, which is what the uh, the official unofficial um, encoder uses. Um, you can go all the way up to 1,024 by 1,024 slice sizes, which would limit your uh, which would limit your uh, uh, choice in uh, when you when you actually do the rate control because you would only have like what three or four um, or four uh, slices per per, uh, per a normal 1080p image. And uh, each slice has map coefficients from each uh, level. Uh, the uh, the encoder and decoder have a complicated uh, have a bit of a complicated thing, which 
you know, just four lines of code to determine which bits, uh, which coefficients are mapped uh, to that specific slice. And each slice must also be padded to a slice scalar um, uh, variable. Now, the size, uh, the, the slice scalar variable is something you specify in the bitstream when you initially, uh, when you, um, when you write the uh, header of the frame. And uh, it tells you by basically how much to, to scale, to multiply the, uh, the slice sizes with. Now, in my opinion, if they had given uh, the slice size for each uh, slice a bit more bits, so for instance, 32 bits would have been sufficient, that would have resulted in much less, um, uh, much less, uh, much less waste because the alignment, uh, the alignment adds up for each slice, so you end up with a lot of bits which you don't use. So you, uh, at the end, you uh, using a uh, a second pass to just redistribute uh, the bits and bump uh, and you know bring down a quantizer by one or two uh, can can result in a bit better image. However, as you as you previously saw in the graphs, uh, whether you increase a quantizer bar two or you or you decrease it, it doesn't matter because it's the the bit cost is mostly linear, and you at the end you won't see much improvement unless you're working in the really really uh, high quantizer range. So, for instance, thirty to forty. So that means a very low bitrate image. Um, as I said, the Dirac uh, and the Dirac codec and uh, Dirac Pro supports uh, multiple um, profiles. It supports the core profile and the low delay profile. And uh, the VC2, um, the VC2 spec adds one more, which is the the high quality profile. Uh, it's a bit more hardware friendly, and I think that's the main reason why it was included in the spec. I don't know why they would call it high quality because it doesn't really much add more to the uh, to the. Um, uh, to the to the codec, uh, except that it adds one more bit for the quantization index. Uh, normal uh, Dirac uses seven bits, and uh, VC2 HQ uses eight bits. But as you saw in the graph, once you go below, uh, once you go above forty uh, quantization index, then then you really then you're left with just junk. So. Uh, no idea why they added that. Uh, it does not interleave co uh, chroma and luma uh, plane coefficients, so that's that's something which is uh, a bit more sane than the uh, low delay profile, which interleaves uh, chroma and luma coefficients, and it was a bit more complicated. So in the end, uh, VC2 is now a, a something which is a bit more simple, but it is a very efficient uh, codec if you want to do streaming. So the advantages of using wavelet-based codecs for streaming, and uh, I'm talking about wavelets, um, um, wavelet-based codecs in uh, in general, because I know for a fact that uh, Sony um, recently released a wavelet-based uh, video codec for streaming, uh, is that each slice can be recorded individually, and you can display that right away. So the latency is absolutely minimal. And with a bit more work, you, you can also uh, modify the FFmpeg uh, decoder to, to output uh, a row of, um, to output and decode an entire row of slices at once. And with a bit more work, you can just make it decode a, uh, a single slice at a time and display that straight to the screen. Um, there is no need for a deep locking filter uh, because, because of the way wavelets work. Uh, each, um, um, basically, each slice uh, um, will also, with a 9.7 wavelet, or with, with basically a non-hard wavelet, you kind of have an overlapping uh, effect kind of happening with, with, uh, with wavelets. So uh, you, can, you can treat slices of the blocks, and you can treat uh, the VC2 codec as just a block-based uh, codec if you just admit that there's a bit of an overlap uh, happening because of the way uh, uh, non-hard wavelets work. Um, but it's computationally very cheap, and it's a very cheap, uh, a very simple codec to, to actually write. And uh, we wrote the FMPEG uh, uh, encoder in in less than two months. We got it working, and uh, we spent like a month more to improve its performance. And now it's doing a uh, a very good um, uh, job. It's not it's not low latency yet, so it has to wait for each slice to arrive before it can it can output an entire frame. But uh, we're looking to improve that in the future, hopefully. Um, 
and most importantly of all, if it looks good enough, if you give it enough bits. So, um, so if if you're working with like 200 megabits uh, a second for uh, for a 1080 um, i uh, 30 video, then you be you have enough bits uh, to spare to actually make the image look good and. Uh, and if you if you want, you can increase the bit rate um, to however much you want. Uh, the codec becomes lossless when you go above uh, when you go above uh, a certain rate. Uh, there is no special option to enable lossless mode, but I suggest you just bump the bit rate up high enough, and uh, the codec will uh, will just output the smallest frame. Uh, uh, the encoder will just output the smallest uh, packet it can, and will still uh, keep um, keep. Um, Keep the result lossless. It, the the encoder also might be useful for applications like um, like in um, uh, like in screen uh, encoding. So if you just wanted a quick codec to to record your screen while you're doing something with it, and you need absolutely every bit of performance uh, you can for the thing you're doing rather than encoding, then uh, then VC2 uh, might be a good choice for that as well. And um, some other uh, current uses of wavelets, uh, Dallas um, unfinished screen coding mode. Uh, GM started that back in 2014, or was it 13? I cannot remember exactly. Uh, Dallas uses a hard transform, uh, three levels on uh, on a 64 by 64 uh, block um, 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 uh, basis. Um, also, um, wavelets are also used kind of in the uh, PNG um, Atom 7 interlacing. So, for those, for those of you who haven't heard of it, this is when you can uh, you can um, set a PNG image to be um, in the encoder side to be decoded in um, in uh, in stages. So you can first decode a smaller, uh, a smaller, low less version of, of the image, and then you can uh, give it a bit more detail, and and uh, it would increase its resolution and so on. So it's very similar to to what uh, wavelets do anyway. Um, a bit of a note: although Dala has the uh, 44 by uh, 64 by 64 DCTs, they're not uh, really full DCTs, uh, 64 by 64 DCTs, but. They're certainly good enough, and uh, I do remember that they gave around uh, one point something dB uh, improvement. And uh, this is uh, basically the end. Um, are there any questions? You. How do you choose the sizes of your slices? Sorry, how do you choose which side? Oh, the size of the slices. Uh, basically, you you determine your your um, you divide uh, the bit rate for for that frame you have by by the amount of slices you have. So you have some basis uh, to go on, and uh, you try to fit uh, to fit each uh, each slice within that that uh, that size. So you run a search. Uh, thankfully, the search we use is not an exhaustive one, so it's it's a bit smarter. It knows whether to go up or down by by uh, by uh, by some multiple. And uh, at the end, you have leftover bits because you don't want to overshoot uh, because this is uh, this is a codec used for uh, for streaming, and you don't really want to overshoot anything. Uh, so you if if you go above because of the size of uh, the size uh, the slice scale you you bump the the quantizer up so your size goes down and uh, you measure how many bits are left over and you you have a, and you just take into account how many bits you have left over at the end and you redistribute those bits at the end uh, amongst each slice and uh, and yeah that's basically how it's done right now Uh, I am. I don't remember it, uh, but all right. It's called the low latency video codec. <laughs> all right. Any? Sorry. The license. The license is uh, LGPL. It's um, it's um, it's it's integrated into the FMPEG code base. It was written for Open Broadcast Systems Limited, so they own the copyright. So, in case you want to license it, uh, Kieran's the person to speak to. Anyone else? No? 
All right, well, the guy there is, is waving at me and he's saying that I have one minute left. So for this one minute, I'd like to thank you all for coming and listening to my ramblings. And, uh, and uh, I hope it was interesting, but I bet it wasn't because, uh, you know, Dirac, that's like a few generations behind, uh, behind the Hearn curve. But I should note that, it's, uh, that, it's, that the features of EC2 are important to broadcasters right now. And, uh, and for that, it's certainly something which is worth developing and especially worth hacking on because the code base is so simple that you can just straight away just implement something like a, like a very exhaustive uh, trellis-based um, uh, system to actually determine what slice, uh, size you need. All right, uh, that's it, so um, thanks.